So the latest Realme smartphones now come packing a fresh new launcher which is imaginatively titled Realme UI. It's still very early days for Realme UI so it does very closely resemble a bit of colour OS action on which it is based. In fact any colour OS fans who happen to be flicking around in the settings might get a serious case of deja vu. All the same I've definitely been enjoying Realme UI here on the latest Realme X50 Pro flagship smartphone and the good news is that that software experience is basically the same on the more wallet friendly handsets as well like the 6 series stuff. So even if you're a bit skinned, you should still be able to get stuck into the very best Realme UI features. This tips and tricks guide is designed for anyone who's new to Realme UI just to walk you through some of the best features, show you how to get the most out of your fresh new Realme smartphone. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, quite a lot of the best tools and features can be found scrolled away inside of that notifications bar. However, you'll definitely want to have a bit of a fiddle and a play around with those shortcut icons because a lot of the best stuff is actually hidden away by default. Now to actually edit the shortcut icons, you'll need to tap this wee icon up here. It looks a little bit like a notepad and pen or perhaps someone stabbing a box with an ice pick. So give that a wee poke and then as you can see these icons up here are the ones you've already got in your notification shortcuts and these ones down here are ones that you can add in. All you need to do is long press on one, drag it up and then it's added to the bunch. Now three shortcuts that I personally recommend dragging in there because I find them quite helpful at least are focus mode, kid space and grayscale. Focus mode is particularly great now that we're all self-isolating and basically messaging each other non-stop for some semblance of human contact. What this allows you to do is basically restrict the use of certain apps that you might find quite distracting in everyday life such as Twitter, a bit of WhatsApp, things like that. You can restrict them for however long you need to or actually set a schedule as well so for instance only when you're working during the week. And that kids space uh, feature is definitely well worth a punt now as well now that all the schools are out and our wonderful offspring are now surrounding us 24 hours a day. Unless you don't have kids of course in which case it's a bit pointless. So if the wee buggers are irritating you you can basically just turn on kids space at the exact duration they're allowed to use the phone, set up any app restrictions so they don't see anything they're not supposed to and then enter that kids space. And then there you go they've got a really fun selection of apps that they can play around with to keep them distracted and they can't actually access any of the important stuff. And then to quit kids space just tap this little icon down here and as you can see you'll need to actually scan your fingerprint or else use your password to actually get out of it. And then last up that grayscale app basically filters all of the colour from your display, makes it nice and easy on the eye, great news if you find yourself wide awake at 3am worrying about the state of the world and you just want to browse a bit of Instagram or something. Although if you are worried about the state of the world right now Instagram probably ain't the best idea, maybe just go read a book or something. Now Realme UI sits of course on on top of Android 10 and it sports a lot of those best Android 10 features on there such as for instance the excellent dark mode. Not all apps currently support it but the large majority do which is great to see especially all of those Google apps of course. If you want to turn on dark mode at any point nice and easy just head into the settings then go to display and brightness and then there's an option right at the top there. And you'll actually find that you can add a shortcut icon to the dark mode here in the notifications menu as well. As usual just tap it and drag it up and there you go. Now one thing that Realme handsets and smartphones in general have in common in 2020 is the fact that they are absolute whoppers. They're freaking massive which means that one-handed use can be a little bit tricky at times. No worries though because Realme UI offers a fair bit of help. So for instance did you know you could drag down that notifications bar from anywhere on screen just by swiping down with your thumb. No more stretching all the way to the very top of that display which frankly at times can be completely impossible. To set this up all you need to do is pinch your fingers on the desktop so then you'll see the settings menu pop up and in there you'll find the swipe down on home screen option just give that a tap it is actually set to global search by default all you need to do is change that to notification center and realme ui also boasts a dedicated one-handed mode as well what you'll need to do is go into the settings and then go to convenience tools and then navigation buttons now i've got the standard swipe gesture navigation set up and what you need to do is go down to the bottom of this screen and you'll find pull down to enter one-handed mode make sure that is active and then what you'll need to do is basically just swipe down with your thumb right in the center of that display so you hit the bottom edge and as you can see the entire screen then shrinks down. You can use all of your apps in this format, it's much much easier to use one handed job done. And Realme UI also has some screen off notification support as well, the likes of an always on display and some funky lighting effects that'll just help to attract your attention whenever something pops into your box so to speak. Anything that's demanding your attention will pop up in the form of a little icon and then you can just unlock your smartphone in order to actually check it out. To set up the always on display just go into the Realme UI settings, head to display and brightness and then you'll find the screen off display option in there. You can actually schedule what time the screen off display is active so you can shut it off 
when you're supposed to be all tucked up with Teddy at night, handy stuff. And you could also set up exactly what information is displayed on that always on display as well. And then back in the display and brightness section of the settings, scroll down to the bottom and you will find screen light effects. This is basically the equivalent of a notifications LED for your Realme smartphone. As you can see there, you can set up exactly what color you want it between purple, blue and orange. Not the biggest selection ever, but at least you've got a choice. It is a neat little effect, so though the edges will only flash a couple of times when you get a notification. It's not like a constant effect, probably to preserve battery life, I guess. And note that unfortunately not all Realme smartphones will have that always on display option or the light notification either. So the likes of the Realme 6 series, for instance, it's missing in action. Now, another nifty little tool that I love here in Realme UI is the easy to use split screen feature. You find this squirreled away if you go into settings and then dive down into convenience tools and then gestures and motions, three finger screenshot. And then if you're in a supported app and you wanna get a bit of split screen action on the go, just swipe three fingers up that display. As you can see, that will pop up to the top and then you just find something else to open, for instance, a bit of YouTube and bosh. I find this really helpful if you just want to get a little bit of YouTube action on the go while doing something else. So for instance, checking mails or browsing the web, something like that, very easy to do. Makes use of that massive display. Now, another great thing about Realme UI is it doesn't seem to feature half as much crapware as quite a lot of other Chinese launches as well. So you dive in there, you've got a couple of bits, but they are actually genuinely helpful. For instance, one app that's bound to stir the loins of any gamers out there is the Game Space app. You've got quick access to all of your titles that you've got downloaded on your smartphone. And once you're actually in there, just swipe down from the left hand corner and you'll have fast access to a whole bunch of bonus tools. So for instance, you can quickly access the likes of WhatsApp and Messenger if you need to get in touch with someone urgently, you can reject calls. You can check out the current time, the current battery status, how much of your resources the game is sapping, and you can even do a bit of screen recording if you want to share your mad skills. And I also quite like the Phone Manager app as well, which unsurprisingly allows you to manage your phone. For instance, in here you've got full control over your app permissions. It's just another way of saying exactly which apps will allowed to start up with the smartphone, uh, which apps can access various bits of your phone, such as for instance your contacts, your camera, and also which apps are allowed to use floating windows. On top of that, you can also perform a full check of your smartphone as well, make sure it's all in good nick. And here on the Realme 6 series, you've even got the likes of a virus scanner as well for added protection. So that right there is my full tips and tricks guide for Realme UI, just to show you some of the best features that you'll find scrolled away in the settings menu there, how to get started with your Realme smartphone. Hopefully you'll enjoy it as much as I do, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Realme UI evolves over the next couple of years to hopefully set itself apart a bit more from the likes of ColorOS. If you've got any tips or favorite features of your own, definitely please bung those down in the comments. Please do put subscribe, ding that notifications bell, do all the usual YouTube shenanigans, and have yourselves a lovely week, people. Cheers, everyone. Love you.